Imagine a ship so massive it can carry half a million tons of crude oil, enough to fill 15,000 road tankers, and still glide across the ocean like a floating fortress. Today, we're unlocking the secrets behind Supertanker Europe, the world's largest oil tanker, and uncovering the incredible engineering that makes this steel giant move. When we think of global trade, most of us picture airplanes, trucks, or maybe those massive container ships stacked with colorful boxes. But here's the truth. Nearly 90% of all goods in the world travel by sea. The global economy runs on ocean highways, and at the heart of that system are ships so colossal, they redefine what big really means. Among them stands a true titan, the supertanker Europe. This isn't just a ship. It's a floating city, a symbol of human ingenuity, and a masterpiece of modern engineering. Let's set the stage. The world's oceans cover about 70% of the planet's surface. They're not just beautiful, they're our arteries of trade. Every day, thousands of ships cross these waters carrying everything from food and cars to electronics and oil. And when it comes to oil, no vessel does it bigger or better than the supertanker Europe. Measuring a staggering 380 meters long, that's over four football fields, and standing as tall as a 24-story building, this beast of steel and machinery can haul roughly 500 million liters of crude oil in one trip. That's half a billion liters of one of the most valuable commodities on Earth. But how on Earth do you even build something this gigantic? It's not like you can just scale up a normal ship blueprint. The bigger a ship gets, the more it's exposed to stress from waves, weather, and weight distribution. If it's not engineered perfectly, it could literally snap in half in the middle of the ocean. Engineers had to solve that problem over a century ago, and their solution changed shipbuilding forever. Back in 1906, a British naval architect named Sir Joseph Isherwood invented something revolutionary, the Isherwood system. Before his innovation, ships were built using a simple rib-like frame, strong but not flexible. When ships started getting larger, those frames couldn't handle the bending forces of rough seas. Isherwood came up with a clever fix, an internal skeleton made of both transverse and longitudinal beams that reinforce the hull in every direction. Think of it like the metal frame inside a skyscraper, strong, rigid, and capable of withstanding immense pressure. That idea is still the foundation for the supertanker Europe today. Inside the hull, over 10,000 steel frames connect from bow to stern, forming a massive exoskeleton. Each frame helps absorb the stress of waves that can rise 10 meters high in stormy seas. The structure is so tough, it can flex and move without breaking, something vital when the ship's hauling a load heavier than 1,500 semi-trucks combined. And this is no ordinary steel either. Every section of the hull is double-walled. That means there's a second steel barrier running parallel to the outer hull, creating a protective buffer. This double hull design is essential for transporting oil. If the outer wall ever cracks, the inner one keeps the cargo safely contained, preventing spills that could devastate the ocean ecosystem. Now, if you're wondering how this monster stays anchored in one place, the answer's as oversized as everything else on board. Each anchor weighs 22 tons, and the anchor chains themselves tip the scales at over 300 tons. When you drop something like that into the water, you're not just anchoring a ship, you're holding back a floating skyscraper. Every piece of equipment on the supertanker Europe is built on this same massive scale. The rudder alone weighs 228 tons, and the ship's propeller, made of solid bronze, weighs 93 tons and spans nearly 10 meters in diameter. It's like watching an industrial-sized windmill push an entire city through the water, but sheer size alone isn't enough. The cargo it carries, crude oil, is one of the most volatile materials on Earth. It's flammable, it can release explosive gases, and it reacts to temperature changes. If not handled properly, one spark could cause catastrophic results. So how do engineers keep half a billion liters of flammable liquid safe? They use one of the most fascinating safety systems ever designed, the inert gas system. The idea actually dates back to World War II, when engineers discovered that fire needs oxygen to burn. If you can remove the oxygen, you can stop an explosion before it starts. Back then, 
aircraft like the Avro Lincoln used nitrogen gas to fill their fuel tanks, replacing the oxygen that made the fumes combustible. The same principle applies here, but on a much, much bigger scale. Inside the supertanker Europe, giant machines constantly generate inert gas, mainly nitrogen and carbon dioxide, from the ship's own exhaust systems. This gas is cleaned, cooled, and pumped into the oil tanks, forming a protective blanket over the cargo. That layer keeps oxygen levels below 5%, which means even if a spark somehow hit the vapor above the oil, nothing would ignite. It's like the ship's own built-in fireproof shield, operating around the clock, and that's just one part of a labyrinth of interconnected systems running through the ship. Deep below the decks lies the pump room, the beating heart of oil transfer. Here, three enormous pumps can move over 250 tons of crude oil per minute. That's roughly four tons every second, all while maintaining precise pressure to prevent dangerous fluctuations. Every valve, pipe, and motor inside that system has to be explosion-proof. One small mistake down there could end in disaster. So the engineering precision is mind-blowing. Now moving a ship this large isn't just about strength and safety. It's about power. And that's where the supertanker Europe truly flexes its engineering muscles. This behemoth is driven by one of the most powerful diesel engines ever built. A nine-cylinder, two-stroke turbocharged engine weighing over a thousand tons. That's about the same as 700 family cars stacked together. And yet, despite its size, this engine is remarkably efficient. Let's rewind for a second. The idea for the two-stroke diesel engine that powers this ship goes way back to the early 20th century, when engineers were trying to find a more reliable alternative to steam. By the 1930s, General Motors perfected the design for locomotives, and those same principles evolved into marine engines that could move millions of tons across oceans. What makes the two-stroke system special is how it generates power every time the piston moves, twice as often as a four-stroke engine. That means more torque, more power, and greater efficiency, which is exactly what you need when you're trying to push half a million tons of steel through rough Atlantic waves. When you stand inside the engine room of the supertanker Europe, it's like walking into the belly of a mechanical beast. The propeller shaft that connects to that engine is a meter wide and stretches the length of a baseball field. Every rotation of that shaft turns the 93-ton propeller, pushing this massive vessel through the ocean at around 30 kilometers per hour, which might not sound fast, but when you're moving that much weight, it's astonishing. And here's another wild fact. Because of its size, the supertanker Europe takes over 5 kilometers in 21 minutes just to come to a complete stop. That's how much momentum this thing carries. Piloting it requires an elite crew of specialists, engineers, officers, and a captain trained to handle some of the most complex navigation challenges on Earth. The bridge of the ship, located six floors above the main deck, is packed with advanced radar and navigation systems that can track everything from nearby vessels to deep ocean currents. But even with all that tech, there's still a deeply human side to this story. Every person aboard has to work in perfect sync, whether they're managing the engine, maintaining safety systems, or simply monitoring the weather. One wrong move can mean millions of dollars in damage, or worse, an environmental disaster. That's why the crew operates like a family, bound by discipline, training, and a shared sense of pride. For many of them, working on a ship like this is the pinnacle of a lifelong dream. And honestly, it's not hard to see why. The supertanker Europe isn't just about brute strength, it's about precision, innovation, and trust in human craftsmanship. Every bolt, beam, and weld is a testament to over a century of maritime progress. It's a floating monument to the spirit of engineering, a reminder that with enough imagination and determination, even the most impossible ideas can become reality. Of course, building ships this massive also pushes us toward the limits of what's possible. As one naval architect put it, we've reached the edge of practicality. These vessels are so large that many ports can't even accommodate them, and specialized infrastructure is required for loading and unloading. But despite those challenges, the payoff is huge. One supertanker Europe can transport as much oil as several smaller ships combined, cutting fuel use per ton of cargo and making global trade more efficient. In a way, 
this ship represents a turning point for humanity. It shows how far we've come in our quest to conquer the seas, and how technology continues to evolve to meet our growing needs. From the wooden canoes of ancient Polynesians to steel giants like this, we've always pushed the boundaries of what we can build. And standing at the bow of the supertanker Europe, watching the waves crash against its hull, you can't help but feel a sense of awe. This isn't just a ship, it's proof that innovation, when paired with courage and craftsmanship, can move mountains, or in this case, entire oceans. The supertanker Europe is more than an oil carrier. It's a floating symbol of human achievement, proof that no challenge is too vast when engineering and imagination collide. It changed what we thought was possible on the open sea, forever shaping the future of global trade. If you loved diving into the incredible engineering behind this ocean giant, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. You'll get more epic deep dives into the world's most mind-blowing machines and the geniuses who built them. Stay curious, because the next breakthrough might just be sailing over the horizon.